Introducing the new Tesla Bot Humanoid. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. This is Elon Musk's latest publicity stunt. Um, with him saying last night at an AI day event that he's going to be creating a new humanoid bot to do physical tasks to assist human beings. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. It's Friday the 20th of August. I hope you're well. Let's get straight into it talk about the briefing this morning. And yeah, it's been a been a real interesting week, really. Um, actually, in terms of um, asset prices, particularly that of stocks and commodities, as you can see here, uh, both are having their worst weeks this year, in fact, uh, if we actually look at it. And it's been a combination of those things I discussed yesterday, uh, obviously a trigger point and catalyst being the slightly more hawkish commentary on the timing of most of the officials um, hinting towards tapering this year. Uh, we have got, once again, overnight, just the latest sell-off in Chinese tech once again. Um, in the overnight session, uh, it happened once more. Um, China's biggest tech stocks dropping sharply, this time on the approval in China of strict data privacy laws. Uh, and this has prompted renewed concerns about the intensity of that ongoing Beijing regulatory crackdown. Uh, this is looking at the last kind of three years of the Hang Seng tech index, which includes those big giants like Alibaba, who hit a new record low again overnight, uh, but Tencent as well. And you can see having been north, well north of 10,000 at the beginning of the year, we're now below 6,000. So quite incredible what's been, been happening there. Then we've got also COVID. Um, that continues to be a kind of weighted factor on the likes of stocks and commodities. And obviously, uh, some question marks over the efficacy of certain types of vaccines, which we were talking about with Pfizer yesterday, about the uh, speed of which then the, uh, the efficacy rate declines over time. Uh, and that has then the Delta variant dampened the outlook for US fuel demand and being one of the key reasons for, for definitely energy prices to have moved lower. Um, we've been seeing multiple consecutive down days in oil that's stabilized a little bit this morning, but generally holding around a $63 handle, so far cry from where we were trading just a few weeks ago. Um, elsewhere, the dollar index as well continues to track up at a nine and a half month high as well. So on the daily charts, we're just thrashing out that previous high, as you can see here. If I just move it into screen so uh, and jump this over to a full screen. If I put this on a daily, it'll start to make a little bit more context as to um, the, the kind of hesitancy at around these levels that we have had, but we are now trading above, which was the third, uh, well, the 31st of, of March high on the peak. And we just managed to get above that this morning. The dollar's pretty flat, but just generally adding to and holding to the gains that were seen yesterday in the overnight Asia pack session. And that does provide generally now uh, perhaps some some headway on the upside still to continue for the for the dollar amid that more hawkish commentary you had uh, emanating from the minutes earlier this week and and certainly then from an asset class perspective that's weighed on on, on commodities albeit they have stabilized uh, this morning overnight so we are respecting a relative range top right here uh, in gold futures uh, and pretty tight range between the pivot and the Asia pack highs only around a 30 cent range or so um, at 63.73 and 64.04 in the overnight uh, trade. As far as the close on Wall Street was concerned yesterday for equities, it was pretty mixed, really seesaw price action. And one thing I would say now is the calendar's really light today. There's actually not a great deal going on, and that does tend to then move investor attention short term to just general overall sentiment. And being a Friday, going into the weekend, it's gonna be interesting to see, given the fragility of sentiment at the moment, how we hold up for the rest of uh, today. Um, COVID side of things, yeah, things still not looking um, particularly good at the minute in the US. There was a couple of things I was tweeting about you might have seen last night. Um, US patients who uh, are dying in US hospitals at levels now not seen since February. Uh, that number now is north of 1,000. And the numbers could worsen as intensive care units overflow in parts of the South. And what some of these articles were talking about is that in Alabama, for one, 
there is now more people in ICU uh, statewide than there are staffed beds available. Uh, Florida, Mississippi, Georgia, Texas are all using more than 90% of their ICU capacity uh, at this present point in time. And then elsewhere as well on, on the on the side of uh, COVID, Australia's New South Wales has reported uh, 642 locally transmitted COVID-19 cases. Uh, so that's meaning then that the state premier has announced they'll extend the Sydney lockdown to the end of September um, and impose curfews as well as masks to be worn um, elsewhere outside. And, and the Aussie dollars really suffered uh, with that commodity decline in combination as well with the ongoing continuous rollover uh, as they try to tackle and contain the COVID outbreak has really weighed on that currency. And in fact, the Aussie yeah, is down around 3.5% from this time last week. And we're now trading at the lowest level since early November of 2020 there in the, the Aussie currency. Um, Sticking with the Antipodeans, the RBNZ governor came out overnight uh, and despite what has been going on more recently with the national lockdown in a very um, kind of onerous response to what had been a, quite a small outbreak, of course, um, the governor or has said, of course, October is a live meeting. So he's still trying to keep that flame alive of, of the prospect of, of tightening policy in the near term. Uh, COVID cases, he said alone, would not prevent the RBNZ from tightening policy. It would take a significant shock to demand to change that view. Um, and worth noting overnight, New Zealand have extended the national lockdown until midnight of August 24th. Um, what has all this meant? Well, obviously, uh, playing into that narrative of uh, just weakening demand for oil is this idea then that we've hit kind of peak growth already and uh, we were talking about this in the last several weeks. Goldman Sachs economists were coming out last uh, yesterday. They've lowered their tracking estimate of U.S. economic growth in Q3 to 5.5% from 9% uh, due to the impact of the Delta variant. However, they have raised their fourth quarter estimate to 6.5% from 5.5% on the prediction that virus fears will diminish and services sector recovery resumes and infantries are replenished. And so actually, they're, they're kind of seeing it's a recalibration of the shape of the recovery. So more um, weaker in the near term in Q3, but actually accelerating harder um, on the catch up through Q4 and beyond into 2022. Uh, so worth being aware of that kind of bank outlook. Um, a few other things just wanted to mention as well from a single stock perspective. Um, I have had quite a few questions recently um, requesting that I could talk about single stocks a little more. Uh, as I've said before, Eddie is the man for that single stock analysis, but certainly I can bring to you some of the main headlines for sure of things I just find interesting and, and things generally moving the market. And one company that was outperforming yesterday, and in fact, the NASDAQ did outperform its, its relative peers. The S&P was up just two tenths, the Dow was actually down two tenths, but the Nasdaq finished up about six tenths, one percent. So it was the best performer yesterday. And Microsoft shares, I think, were up about two percent at the close. So they they really outperformed and helped drag that index up, given how big a company they are. Uh, it came after they increased prices on a bundle of popular products for um, businesses, uh, and this is known as Microsoft 365, and it's the first kind of more substantial cost change that com the company has implemented for the Office product. Um, in about a decade. And so given how widely adopted that is um, and that kind of recurring subscription model that they have, particularly for businesses to use with multi-users and things like that, certainly that's going to that's gonna help uh, and explains that pop we had in prices yesterday. The other thing, as I thought were quite interesting, was Amazon. They're planning to open full-on department stores. Um, now, we've seen this before. They've, they've opened up sort of more Amazon Go uh, more localized shops in, in certain states in America, also in the UK, um, kind of uh, checkout-less shops where it's all done electronically. Uh, but the company's latest move to bricks and mortar comes after Amazon this week, of course, has eclipsed Walmart in overall sales to become the world's largest retail seller outside of China. Um, the Amazon department store strategy is, to, is set to expand sales of Amazon's private label clothing, household items and electronics, as well as independent brands. But I would say be interested to see how they, they fare in private label clothing, clothing a particularly competitive environment, of course. And 
uh, and we'll, we'll see how people acclimatize to wearing Amazon clothes. I can't see myself doing that anytime soon. Uh, the other thing I thought was quite interesting was Facebook. They've unveiled, um, I mean, these, these shots are slightly childish. It feels like I'm playing the Nintendo Wii or something, but this is kind of the mock-ups that they were talking about, unveiling a virtual office app called Horizon Workroom. And it's a new free Facebook app designed to allow employees to work together in a shared imaginary office through their Oculus virtual reality headsets. Um, so creating this kind of metaverse where people can come and uh, this is kind of the next evolution for the um, post-pandemic world where people will still want to operate in the, the long-lasting and more flexibility of having the virtual environment as well as the physical. Uh, so I thought that was quite interesting. And then uh, the, the final thing, of course, was uh, the whole Elon Musk um, situation, which was uh, what I briefly flashed on the screen, which I just thought was um, classic Elon Musk. Um, he said basically Tesla are going to build a humanoid robot called the Tesla bot. Uh, they announced yesterday. Uh, context is always key. Uh, when it comes to Elon Musk, I mean, he's, he's the master kind of puppeteer and in, in the sense of he really knows how to capture the media's interest. And in fact, he was speaking an AI day. And my understanding is there that's where uh, actually there's a lot of technical chat particularly around uh, automation, particularly in the motor vehicle um, division, and it's them trying to attract talent. Um, but obviously throw in some dancing man and then suggesting that um, you know, this is going to be uh, the latest thing that they're going to work on and bring to market next year. I can tell you now that's not going to happen. I mean, the promises that Elon's made over the years, these are kind of side distractions to help in the branding, the marketing, uh, and, and it's definitely a strategy that I think has worked well for him. So, yeah, all jokes aside, I just thought it was uh, quite another stroke of genius from Elon Musk. But what I was a little bit disappointed in, to be quite honest, was that that wasn't Elon Musk. And he rips the face off like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. A little bit disappointing, but we'll have to wait till the next event, I guess. Um, as far as the uh, calendar is concerned for today... There's not a great deal going on, as I said. Um, we've already had UK retail sales come in, and they were weaker than expected. The pound hasn't really reacted, but the pound is sat on the kind of wrong side of an area of support technically for this morning on what has been a continuous downward trend, obviously weighed by the strength of the dollar. You can see here cables really come under some pressure over the course of the last week. Um, we were trading this time last week up at around 138 toward 39 handle, we're now heading towards the 136 mark. Um, and again, we're just having a bit of a test around the, uh, the double bottom of the Asia pack session. Um, now the retail sales was weak. There's a little bit of context to be aware of there. Uh, the actual number month on month minus 2.5% versus expected plus 0.4%. Uh, Non-food stores reported a fall of 4.4%, um, driven by second-hand goods stores and computing telecom equipment stores. I think food sales were also declining, coming down, backing off from the jump um, on supported nature of food we're seeing on the back of the Euro uh, football tournament. And then automotive fuel sale volumes fell as well, about 3% over the month, the first fall we've seen since February of this year after heavy rainfall in early July impacted road traffic volumes as well. So um, I don't think it's too big a deal, to be quite honest. Uh, the market certainly is, is looking at it that way because largely unreactive, but definitely fits that overall directional narrative, which has been lower cable. But generally, um, all of the peers against the dollar lower, given the relative dollar strength being the determining factor in the currency market. Um, looking elsewhere for the rest of the session, yeah, U.S., Nothing really coming out. Got some CAD retail sales, Baker Hughes rig count, and that's pretty much it. And so a kind of slight word of warning, as I said at the beginning of the briefing, that always then typically starts to tend to shift people's view to just the broader sentiment. So just given how things have played out, certainly we'll be keeping an eye on the equity market, on the open, on the NYSE, uh, and also to see as they are at the moment, oil, gold, silver, things like that have stabilized, but uh, I think we'll start probably to see more definitive directional movement as we go into the US session 
uh, later on today. So perhaps a little bit of caution and, and conservatism is, a, is prudent this morning. All right, that is it. Remember as well, it is Friday. So um, our head of trading is away at the moment. So I'm going to be joined by Eddie Donmez, who you will recognize, I'm sure, from the channel. Um, he and I are going to jump on and we're going to talk about our thoughts generally about the sell-off we've had this week in some of the things I've discussed. I'm going to talk about Afghanistan a little bit and my general view on that going forward and any implications for markets. And then Eddie's going to talk a little bit about a few um, single stock stories as well. So make sure you jump on Apple, Spotify, Google, whichever platform you use. Just search for the Market Watch and Amplify. It should come up. And yeah, enjoy. Have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday. Thanks, guys.